For NCAD Knowledge, we're joined today by Piyush Gupta, CEO of Southeast Asia and Pacific for City. Today we're talking about women and why women are so important to business, both in terms of uh, internally, in terms of employees and leaders, and also in terms of customers. What do you see as some of the challenges? Well, you know, as employees, if you look at the banking profession, frankly the financial services profession, uh, in the last couple of decades, there has been a huge uh, shortage of talent. Turnover and attrition has probably been the single biggest challenge that the community, the banking community has had, with turnover rates in specific disciplines getting into the 20% range. Uh, if your only raw material is intellectual horsepower, and you're not sort of relying on steel to make cars, then losing people at that kind of rate is a serious problem. Uh, and when you look at our people situation, by and large, and particularly at senior levels in the financial services industry, it's quite clear that we are just not capitalizing enough on uh, women power, right? So in most firms, there's probably a, a fairly even distribution of women at junior levels in the organization. But when you get to where the rubber meets the road, the leaders, the business managers, the people who are going to set direction, we just don't uh, employ enough uh, women. Um, at City, for example, we think we do a decent job, but as you get to more senior levels in the company, the ratio drops from 50% to like 20%. And when you're in a situation where talent is at a premium, where turnover is high, then it really hits you. You're just not capitalizing on an immensely useful and powerful source of talent that as a business uh, you should be doing. Right? So that's clearly uh, uh, issue number one. I guess the second thing is, you know, we realized in certainly in Asia in the last couple of decades that as consumers and customers, women are increasingly beginning to make a lot more of the financial buying decisions uh, in households. And that's certainly true as wealth management clients, people who make the investment decision in families and homes. And that's also true, uh, frankly, in corporates. Increasingly, uh, CFO roles and treasurer roles in several companies are performed by women. And not having women on our side to be able to face off against the client base, to understand how this client base thinks, what are the hot buttons, that's something we obviously uh, don't do very well on. And we're giving up an opportunity when we think of that as well. Uh, actually, finally, the third is something which is, you know, frankly, in some ways, new uh, thinking, at least new thinking in uh, my own uh, frame of reference. And that's around the fact that it's just not a question of getting more talent or missing some obvious talent. It is also a question of improving the quality of your decision making and the quality of the outputs that you create just because you have a more balanced uh, management team. Right? And most of, there's been a lot of uh, uh, feedback, there's been a lot of uh, commentary in the last couple of months. Uh, people talk about the fact that if there'd been a lot more women in senior roles in financial services, maybe a lot of the financial services problems in the last year might have been avoided. And I think that's not just uh, facetious. I think it is true that if we had a different kind of decision-making complement, a more balanced decision-making group, we might have as a, as a community come up with different kinds of decisions. Uh, that's a realization which I think it will take some time to settle. I, the idea is not just to get a lot more women who are alpha males, but to get women because they think differently. And there is value to the thinking differently and managing differently that we're not capitalizing on enough as an industry. What can you do or what are your plans? I know this is one of your priorities. How do you bring more women in? Well, you know, there's something that we do. And at City, like I said, I think we do a reasonably decent job, which is try to create uh, a, an agenda for women. So we, we do a lot of focus. We have a lot of focus on, um, you know, talent, recognizing the women talent, and then creating an environment where we work with them from a training standpoint, give them a community, give them a network, role modeling, mentoring, uh, try and find specific roles uh, uh, for them to grow into. So I think we do a lot of work working with women and creating opportunities for women. Uh, and when we talk to our women employees in terms of does it make a difference, uh, the general view is yes, it does. It's helpful. Uh, the, the company uh, tries to make things uh, you know, proactive and, and easy for women to work with. Are you worried that the current economic crisis will overshadow some of these issues? You know, again, some of the recent commentary has been interesting. There's been a view from several sectors that in a, in a recession, in an economic crisis, actually women suffer more than men, right? Because when you look at uh, reductions in workforce, they tend to be disproportionately higher in terms of women than in terms of men, right? And so 
if anything, if you look at the financial services, it has brought the women's issues more to the fore rather than push them to the background, both in terms of are women getting a fair shake, but also in terms of what I mentioned earlier. If we had more women in decision-making positions in financial services, could we have done a better job uh, than we did over the last few years? So I don't think it's going to push this off the agenda. Uh, frankly, if anything, it is going to bring this even more on the table. When you talk about making cultural changes, you're obviously talking about a long-term strategy. How long does something t like this take, and what do you see sort of as the future within Citibank? Well, you know, I think there are two elements to that. One is there's a number of things you do, uh, which are through tactical initiatives and programs, and I think those have value in the sense that they do impact culture. So when your employees see you, you know, out there in front making a conscious effort saying, you know, you must have women on hiring slates, you must have women on recruitment slates, you must have an ability to, you know, a training program for women, mentorship programs for women, and if it's out there all the time, it brings a consciousness in the organization that this is an important business agenda, and therefore you need to be able to address it. So I think that's um, helpful. However, underlying that is a more subtle, uh, nuanced culture shift. And which is, you know, how do you switch from being a, you know, old boys club into really being a gender neutral uh, kind of uh, organization? And frankly, you know, the truth is in financial services, the parts of the financial services firms, typically the uh, investment banking components, the markets organizations, the traders, right, which have been very dominant, uh, dominated by uh, men, by males. And to get the culture shift in those parts of the organization is a much bigger challenge. Now, we keep striving at it, uh, but, you know, part of it is also, you know, some jobs I read, some which are called extreme jobs, right? So, you know, a lot of these jobs are extreme jobs, and the fact is that there's been traditionally a history of, you know, requirement of high testosterone in those jobs, you know, people um, out there taking big risks. Going back to my earlier comment, I think the crisis will be helpful. I think people will recognize that it is not just you know the biggest risk takers who are the best performers in those kinds of jobs, and maybe there's a different angle even in those kinds of jobs and in those areas of the financial services uh, field. Uh, so I think there's no shortcut to this. We're just going to have to keep working at it. Uh, but I have to admit, this is not a you know one two year journey. This is probably going to take a little bit of time. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having.